The UK Independence Party has won its second seat in Parliament in a by-election on Thursday night. With me to discuss the implications is the FT's chief political commentator, Janan Ganesh. Janan, Mark Reckless won this seat in the estuary town of Rochester. Um, what does it mean for UK politics? Well, it makes it difficult for David Cameron, the Prime Minister, to win next year's general election. He has already lost one MP, Douglas Carswell, to UKIP. Mark Reckless is a second. There's a prospect of further defections. And even if those defections don't come, UKIP could erode the Conservative vote share from the right by a significant extent, thereby making it difficult for uh, the Tories to hang on to marginal seats against Labour and, and other parties. So UKIP don't need to win many MPs on their own to do a lot of damage uh, to Conservative prospects next May. And why is UKIP winning so much support? I mean, Britain's economy is growing at 3% a year. More than a million jobs have been created in the last four years. What, what's the problem? A lot of it is attributed to a vast wave of immigration that arrived post-2004, when a lot of Eastern and Central European countries were admitted into the EU. Residual resentment of that combined with a feeling that the recovery is, is occurring at a macro level, but is not delivering in terms of... Um, household incomes, has led to a sense of frustration, uh, especially among lower middle class voters, uh, concentrated in areas like Strood, which is one half of the constituency that, that turned UKIP last night. But of course, historically, you'd expect voters who were upset about living standards to turn to the Labour Party. Why are they going to UKIP instead? Well, a, a large part of this is cultural as well as economic. And there's a feeling among these voters that Labour has, has moved some way from them on cultural issues. So to return to migration, it was la a Labour government that uh, allowed in that wave of immigration in the last decade. And it's Labour politicians such as Emily Thornbury, the shadow attorney general who stood down last night, who were seen as kind of tin-eared to white working class voters. She, she took a photo of a house in Strood with uh, English flags draped all over it, a white van parked outside. She seemed to be tweeting about it in a, in a disparaging way. And that caused such, um, such a stir. She on was forced to resign, wasn't she? She was forced to resign yeah. by Ed Miliband. And yeah. it sounds a drastic step, but they wanted to stem the, the rage at, the, at this spectacle of an Islington MP um, disparaging white working class patriotism. So there's a cultural as well as economic reason as to why Labour are not moving these voters who traditionally are part of their base. So we had this rather bizarre situation where we thought this morning we'd see the Conservatives embarrassed and instead we actually had Labour embarrassed. It's a, it was a bizarre day. You began Thursday assuming that Friday morning would be uh, a huge problem for David Cameron. Questions about his leadership would re-emerge and instead I think he occupies maybe one third of the headlines today and actually it's the, the reaction to Emily Thornbury and Labour that is a much bigger deal. And uh, you can imagine that what people will take away from this result is not just the Conservative defeat, but the fact that Labour only scored 17% yeah. in a seat which, under slightly different boundaries, they won and held until 2010. So do you think at the general election next May, Janan, that UKIP will be able to translate this support into a lot of seats or not? My hunch is that they won't win a lot of seats. Uh, they scored only 3% in 2010. They'll do better than that, but maybe not much better than that, maybe somewhere between five and ten points. As the election approaches, you imagine voters get a bit more serious and realise that the ultimate choice is between David Cameron and Ed Miliband as Prime Minister. What could prove me wrong is if there are further defections that keeps UKIP in the news, gives them more oxygen, and they end up doing uh, much better than I've just suggested. But it, it's very tough for the Conservatives to win an outright majority, certainly, if UKIP do very well in May. Janan, thank you very much.